Shock wave. Wait, I feel like. Oh, mess it up. Shock and awe. <laughs> okay, shock and awe. Get, get with it. Good song. Um, so, welcome. This is our mid month for October. Welcome to We Made It Halfway. Turn up, turn up. Um, honestly, the majority of the crazy, strange, like, intense stuff has already passed. Okay, so that's good. Um, relationships clearly has been on key since the, like, the end of September with Libra season starting, and now we have Mercury who's moved through Libra, the Sun who's moved through Libra, Venus is now in Libra, like, zero degrees, and then Mars is on its way into Libra, so the rest of October is going to be tons of Libra energy. We even have Jupiter and Scorpio. We'll be having Scorpio season happening, um, Mercury as well moving into Scorpio, so that energy shift as well. We'll talk about that. And um, if you didn't check out the weekly I just did from October 15th through the 21st, check that out because it's going to go, go way deeper into what is going to be happening astrologically for um, that week. And so I'm going to just kind of glance through since it's just literally the half of the month I can't go through every day because it would take forever. So we're just going to breeze through these days, but if you want to get a deeper insight, check the weeklies, okay? And if you want to get even deeper, check the dailies, because that's going to be um, per day, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so basically what's been happening is we had the full moon in Aries kicking off October. Um, Venus and Mars were together, and what was going on is basically Venus has been behind Mars since the retrograde, her retrograde in February, and we've been having to really... Venus has been trying to catch up with the Mars, the masculine. So the feminine has been trying to catch up with the masculine um, in all aspects. So that is like the masculine has been, think about even the politics. Masculine energy has been very like driven and everybody's been trying to make decisions and changing all these things and not a lot of, you know, receptivity and, and, and nurturing has been happening, um, which is more feminine. Um, you know, protests and stuff has a very masculine energy. Everybody's been trying to get their jobs and get their figure out their career, very masculine energy. But now Venus has passed, and starting on the full moon in Aries, it illuminated a lot of things, and now the receptive's in, in the lead, the intuitive's in the lead, and the divine feminine's in the lead now, um, going through Virgo, and about to slip into Libra. Um, well, she did today, actually, so. Um, which is great news. And so basically what that did is now our relationships are, we had a balance point, and now we're able to kind of relay back and forth now. Because before, we had Venus catching up, and so we were trying to heal things, and, and it just, you know, was an imbalance completely. Now we had that balance point on the 5th of October, and so now we're kind of trying to figure out where everything stands in our relationships. Um, we have tons of Uranian transits with Uranus the week from October 15th through the 21st. Mercury, Mercury and the Sun will be opposing Uranus, um, in Aries, okay? So Uranus and Aries have been happening since, like, 2012, I believe. Redefining our personality and, you know, our uniqueness and kind of what makes us stand out and the, our path, our personality path almost, our journey based on kind of who we are. Redefining who we are all since 2012 with Uranus and Aries. And with that, you know, defining who we are, opposing all this energy in Libra, Mercury, and the Sun... This is causing major insights coming in, um, you know, aha moments, Uranus rules sudden revelations, sudden realizations, so lots of shifts have been occurring in our personalities and how we're feeling about ourselves, and that instantly has been shifting how we feel in our relationships, okay? So that's going to be the big key thing um, this week coming up with Mercury opposing the sun, I mean Mercury opposing um, Uranus as well as the sun, okay? So check out the weekly again for that, I'm going to go way deeper into that, um, there, or I do go deeper into that there. Um, then we have Mercury going into Scorpio on the 17th of October, which is going to be really big. Right now, you know, Mercury is our thoughts and our communication, and it's kind of been this airy Libra energy and, and, and just kind of, you know, thinking really a lot about others. We can't really stop thinking about everybody else because Mercury's in Libra. So on Tuesday, Mercury will move into Scorpio, where we will be having, you know, our, we'll be really in the investigative kind of mindset. Scorpio is like the detective sign, so we'll be really trying to figure out, you know, what's going on in situations and kind of like 
you know, lots will be coming up. Um, lots of hidden things will be revealed to us, secrets coming out, that kind of thing, starting on Tuesday for the next two weeks. Okay. Um, and then we have Scorpio season with the sun coming into Scorpio um, after that on the 23rd of October. Okay, so we started with Jupiter moving into Scorpio on the 10th of October. Then we had Mercury happening now, 17th of October, and then a little bit later on, Scorpio season starts 23rd with the sun in Scorpio. Okay, lots of Scorpio energy. Um, so lots of secrets, lots of things in the dark that are coming out. Lots of, you know, things that need to be healed that are being illuminated. And, and, and you know, no more secrets and no more... It's about being authentic and, and shining a light on every aspect of yourself and, and, and others as well. Um... New Moon and Libra is going to be happening on Thursday, 19th of October. It's going to be great. Um, that's going to be really offering um, just newness. You know, new moons are about setting new intentions and new beginnings. And with it being a Libra, it's with partnerships and relationships. Okay, so we now are having all the Scorpio energy coming in with Mercury and the Sun opposing Uranus as well, Mercury and Scorpio, um, to kind of give us an understanding of ourselves and relationships and kind of the feelings and vibes we get from others about us and, and how we feel about others um, and so we're going to have all that together and kind of have a new place meant for others in our life and ourselves in their life on this new moon um, again in the weekly you're going to go way deeper um, and then it's about you know Mar we have Mars moving into Libra that's going to be big Sunday the 22nd okay because Mars is our motivation and our drive so we've been talking the game of relationships and thinking about it for a minute with Mercury and Libra almost in Scorpio, so the, it's been completely through Libra. The sun's in Libra as well, so our awareness, we're thinking, you know, we're seeing relationship changes. We're, we're seeing, you know, lots of people in our lives. We're dealing with relationships now. But Mars is our motivation and our drive, so we're not even really motivated to really take the change to really initiate newness in our relationships or anything like that until the 22nd when Mars goes into Libra, the day before Scorpio season. And then the last major transit would be on the 26th of October when the sun conjuncts Jupiter. Okay, this is going to be a super lucky day. Um, Jupiter is a very benefic planet. It's known as the most benefic. Um, it offers the blessings and abundance and expansion um, with whatever it touches. So the sun is your awareness, your life, your ego, yourself. So with that connection, there's going to be an expansion on self and how you feel about yourself. Um... You know, with it being Scorpio, it's going to be kind of more of an emotional transit. This time last year, it was in an air sign, so lots of communication. So this time, it's going to be more emotional. Um, and that's definitely just going to be illuminating lots of things. And and really, you might receive, you know, blessings and money from others as well with that um, opposition to Jupiter and Scorpio, which rules joint finance as Scorpio does. So um, expect and look out for that. Again, the weeklies will be giving tons more details of the weekly coming the next week, from the 22nd through the 28th, will be I'll be going way deeper into detail on that Sun conjunct Jupiter there. Um, so that is our astrology for the second half of October. Um, you know, super excited to see what comes out, what's revealed. Again, whatever happens, just know it's in the flow and is for your highest good, and it's going to be moving you into newness and moving you into greater, you know, greater things. Um, one thing next we're going to go into our oracle and tarot guidance for each sign um this time you know every time i have to switch it up because I, why do the same so this time i'm just going to literally, literally just kind of be coming from a a flow i just kind of feel like my readings and when i have clients you know my, my, my clients sometimes I, I remember one reading literally went three hours because the flow you know what i'm saying and so I'm going to try the flow and just see where that goes and not really give it labels as to what I'm going to be pulling for and just see, you know, where we are situationally and, and energetically. And I was kind of be um, talking stream of consciousness and then allowing, you know, the, the messages I need to just come out there. Okay. And so let's get into that now. Second part of the reading. What's up? What's up, everybody? Okay. So little, I'm just going to insert this in here. Um, I'm doing the, the Oracle readings different this time because I feel there's a different vibe with the Scorpio energy coming in. Um, and these cards, I feel like we want a really deep, resonating reading. And, and, and these cards have really been healing me and helping me recently. Um, and so I'm going to use them for every sign. Um, this is Sacred Rebels. And in the guidebook, the, 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 you know, each card comes with a very detailed, um, description and, 
is amazing what, you know, what, what comes out, you know what I'm saying? So for each zodiac sign, I'll be pulling a card and reading what that card means for your mid month for October. So stay tuned. I'm super excited to share this card, these cards with you. Um, and let's get into it. Thanks. What's up, Taurus? And welcome to your October mid-month oracle reading, guys. So for you, you got focus on the light. Beautiful card, okay? So let me get the reading. A tremendous force of light is gathering around you. It is attracted to the purity of your inten intention to create from your heart. As your intention grows, so does the light. As the light grows, so does your intention. Magic wants to happen for you now. The synchronicity, perfect timing, opportunities, and information that are needed will seem to be drawn right to your door. You may start to feel as if you cannot walk outside without stumbling into something helpful, wonderful, and inspiring. You might be startled at this interplay of light with your heart evokes many new successes and attracts an abundance of opportunities your way. You may need to adjust as the field of light grows stronger and its effects become more palpable. It may bring rather dramatic improvements into your world. You may be uncomfortable or feel out of your depth with these changes. This would be understandable, but it would be a shame for you to hold on to that resistance for anything more than a brief moment. Any resistance or fear will inhibit the continuing free flow of the light, so that it can manifest its beauty through you in the physical world where it is needed. It is best to stay focused on your pure heart and intentions. Just allow all else to happen of its own accord without making it mean anything too personal. Simply let it be the workings of the great light of love flowing through a pure heart and touching the world. Even if the light that it is drawn to you flows through you has some dazzling effects, you don't have to get caught up in it. Doing so might start you worrying that you are unworthy or that you are unable to keep up. This worry will constrict possibilities rather than allowing the free flow of the light. You have permission simply to be appreciative of the light and to enjoy it as you continue to focus on what really matters. The pure intention of your heart and your desire to create. Which is totally Taurus because y'all are the, the creators, the manifestors. If you are not sure what this means or how it would look on a practical level, Consider this example. A service-oriented business becomes very successful financially and gains considerable commercial power which can be used to help promote its message or assist other organizations in gaining exposure to the public. Of course, that power could be used in less pure ways such as boosting personal ego rather than promoting the agenda of the heart. Power games and politics might start erupting as the people grab for their share and suddenly the purity of the project begins to crumble. Sometimes success can be like a powerful mirror and a shining searchlight as it shows up what was already within someone or a group of people. Under the spotlight of success, it is more intense, amplified, and obvious. This can give us an opportunity to sow that the seeds of our own destruction, or to work on what arises from a heart-centered perspective to create a firmer foundation that supports even greater attainment. How would that work in this example? By returning attention to the heart of why the business was started in the first place, it is wise to maintain focus on the pure, original motivation for the work, rather than shifting course to focus on money or influence. The latter are not bad per se, but they are rather a different vibration focused on personal gain rather than heart-centered contribution. When focus shifts from the heart, the underlying energy of any creative project can become contaminated with lower vibrational forces such as fear, which is behind greed, for example. If this is not re rectified, that business or creative project will begin to change. It will not lose the luster of its original purpose that made it so attractive and magnetic to the light. Its continued ability to grow as a light in the world is diminished. It may end up becoming just another corporate machine, successful, according to more conventional measures, or not. The genuine heart-centered success that creates a win-win field of energy for all involved can only be attained, nurtured, and expanded when those creating the project or business remain focused on the purity of their own original intentions. This oracle brings an assurance of success of the highest order, not just commercially, but from the heart. It will manifest as a highly valuable offering to the world. This applies to a project, endeavor, or organization in which you are involved. 
your heart will help you realize which group or project it applies to. It may be more than one. However, you must stay focused, enjoy the glittering lights of success, but don't be distracted by them. Stay on point with what you want to create and why. Stay true to yourself. This oracle also brings another message. Don't be distracted by other paths around you at this time as you are too close to succeeding on the one you are on now. Diluting your energies in the pursuit of too much will slow down your success and the world needs your light to shine sooner rather than later. In time, you may diversify and explore other ways to express yourself. But for now, build what you are working on and know that success is coming swiftly. All right, so Taurus, that is your message. Now we're going to get into the healing process for you guys, which is basically um, exactly what I just said. Okay, so let's get into that. Imagine that a huge sunflower is following the sun from sunrise to sunset. Imagine a golden arc of light being created by the gently moving head of the sunflower. That arc of light flips upside down to become a vessel filled with golden energy that drops down like rainfall of energy from the golden orb of the sun. Imagine you can bathe in the vessel of golden energy. It feels good. Stay with that good feeling and let it settle in your heart. In your own time, just open your eyes. You have completed your healing process. All right, and there it is, Taurus. Thank you so much for your thank tune for your Oracle mid-month message. I hope that really resonated with you guys, and I will get back with you soon. If you want to have a personal reading with me, you want to do more, um, you know, into tarot or Oracle about exactly, you know, a situation you're going through, go to my Instagram, my website, and get in contact with me. And until next time, I'm out.